Well, hello there, you fabulous interior design professional. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Kimberly Selden, and I am a practicing designer just like you are, I suspect. In fact, I would say these days, it's safe to say I practice more than I complete anything, more than I win, if we can call finishing a project winning. It seems to me one project after another has been delayed in some way by COVID and the pandemic and lockdowns which is requiring all of us to be flexible and patient. And that's easy for me to say I'm financially secure. I know I have more work coming, but some of my trades are frustrated because they can't get their schedules lined up and stick to anything. They're moving from one job site to another, depending on what's happening. I feel for them. I really do. It has me wondering again. If this job is so complicated and complex, and I believe it is, why would anyone do this work for so little money? For example, why would anyone work for minimum wage? Now, I know you're thinking, I don't work for minimum wage. Hmm. I remember years ago, an accountant taking the wind out of my sail because I was super excited. I made $30,000 at the end of the year. Back in the day, I didn't take a salary off the top. I waited to the end of the year, and if there was money left over, and if was a big unknown, then I would take money for a salary, but always at the end of the year. I am going to finish that story, and there's so much more to talk about in this episode. 205. Wealth is the goal. And a woman I admire so much because she is clear-eyed and focused when it comes to goals is Cheryl Horn. Let's check in with Cheryl and see what's happening at Business of Design. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm super happy because I actually got some client work done this last week. So I'm feeling pretty, you know, smug about that until I realized that I forgot 29 other things I needed to do for a couple of clients. So, oh, well, one step forward, (laughs) one little baby (laughs) half a step back. That's okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? One of my, when we had talked about, um, our, our resolutions when we did BOD Live back in December, I wanted to be really intentional with my time. I just, um, and I feel like I'm involuntarily homeschooling right now. And it has forced me to be really intentional because my hours are fewer. So um, I think for business of design, uh, you know, I'm, I'm checking things off the list like like crazy, but it's, you know, there's, there's still things that need to get done, but our, our focus is a lot more, narrow these days. It's, it's good, but, um, overall, you know, that's for today, a good thing, right? Like overall, overall, that's a really yeah. good thing. Yeah. It sort of like forced me to hit that goal right away, which is a good way to start January. Exactly. Um, I think a lot of our members had that, that goal to be really intentional. Um, but for today, since we didn't really have anything necessarily timely to uh, remind everyone else, I actually just wanted to do a shout out for membership. Um, you know, I, I said that over the holidays that um, December, January is a really busy time for new members coming to Business of Design. And one of the questions I've been tackling a lot is, do I start with BOD Build program or do I jump right into membership? And I think the main distinction is that our Build program, while we consider it our introductory program, it's an introduction to business of design, whether you are just starting out or you've been in the business for 20 years. Um, If you are brand new to business of design, you've only heard a few podcasts and you're just checking us out, that's the place to start. But if you've been listening for a couple of years, you know, you're probably right to jump right into membership. And that's the biggest distinction. It's, it's an introduction to business of design, not to the actual business. Right. So the build program is the introduction, but business membership is opens up a whole world of courses and the linear pathway to project management, as well as linear pathways to what to charge and how to get paid 
and all those other good things we need in order to run our business. That's a really good way to think about it. If you're not sure uh, who we are and whether or not you can trust us, that $79 for one month is an introduction and you get a taste of what's inside because we also give you step one. But most people should go straight to business membership. And that also includes attendance at the BOD Live events, plus all kinds of discounts on anything you want to purchase within Business of Design, like contracts and operation manual and a con- the contract that I use with my trades, my trade partner agreement, et cetera. Yes. So, I mean, we really haven't done an overview of what membership includes since we relaunched. So um, the BOD 15, our Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy is brand new. Uh, even if you're a longtime member, if you've taken it before, I've gotten so many emails and phone calls from members who are retaking it and, um, you know, just praising the fact that they're able, it's clarified areas of the steps where they've previously had issues. So um, it's it's really helped them, even though they've already been, they felt like they were using the 15 steps um, for years, they're suddenly implementing all new steps. But also as part of your membership, like Kimberly said, uh, you get access to our BOD lives each month. You get to meet face-to-face with our members and have real conversations. You get access to our members only Facebook group and, uh, it's a really busy place to be. You post you post a question if it's um, job specific, project specific, or you need an answer right away. Uh, it's a great place. It's a great resource, and um, I very rarely see a post that doesn't have you know numerous answers within hours, really. And then we also do um, monthly coaching. We used to do a monthly group coaching call, and now we have a coaching section on the website. So if you need clarification on one of the steps, you can send us your questions. And each month, we're going to post some new answers to those questions to make sure everyone's getting the most out of their membership. It's fun being a member. I must say, I can tell you, like, I don't pay for membership, just full disclosure, I, I'm riding for free here. But when I'm at the BOD live events, invariably, somebody will bring up a topic and I'm like, oh my God, that just happened to me last week. And I did not handle that very well. And boom, there's a way to handle it better. So it's a really invaluable resource, I would say, of a community of peers who have your back. And uh, it's a super safe place, but not a place to rest on your laurels. You'll get a little poke in the ribs from time to time on needing to take more action. Yeah, that's right. If you have any questions about membership, by all means, reach out to me, Cheryl at businessofdesign.com. And we hope to see you at the next BOD Live, which is happening in February. That's right. And we have a special guest, Christopher Kennedy. We're going to do a whole little party from Palm Springs. So that'll be a fun new twist that we're doing with BOD Lives. We'll, We'll take you to some fun places. While we can't go there ourselves physically right now, we'll make sure that we get to go there virtually. (laughs) Sounds good. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Cheryl. Take care. Bye. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events, member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Okay, so now back to the story. The accountant, when I mentioned that, wow, I made $30,000 this year, he said to me, that's minimum wage. And I'm like, "Uh uh-uh. Wait, what? You see, my rationale was that I had lost money in the previous year. So wow, $30,000 means I am doing a victory lap. I am climbing my way back up. I've really got a handle on this now. This is just the beginning. My accountant thought something entirely different. Poor woman. She seems nice. She works all the time. Doesn't she realize she's only taking home minimum wage after all her efforts? 2,040 hours is a typical full-time work week. Maybe everything's changed with COVID. I don't know, but that was then, and this is now. I know that. But 2,040 hours at $15 an hour minimum wage is 30000 annually. Can that really be enough? 
Would it shock you to know that in 16 years teaching business of design, teaching business training, we hear that number repeatedly over and over again. Now, some of you might be saying, yeah, I take home 30,000 annually, but I only do one client a year. Great. Good. That's fantastic. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the designers who, like me, were really working flat out, putting in way too many hours and taking home a miserable paycheck or none at all. After a year of managing clients and managing staff and managing trades and managing deficiencies, oh, I hate deficiencies. I so hate deficiencies. I know I talk about that a lot, but I really do. Just this week, we're working on a project in Los Angeles and they're opening up the showers which is an exciting moment in the project, right? Things are really happening. They open up the shower and the pipe that's running through the shower cracks right in their hands. It's corroded through and through. So that's bad news for the bathroom renovation, but I think it's worse than that because this is an older home. And if one pipe looks like that, I'm guessing the rest of the pipes may look like that as well. Are you really going to plan a big renovation and not deal with what potentially could be disaster down the road? Yikes. So everything's on hold. Here we go again. None of us likes to deal with that stuff. And yet we do a lot of that. At least I do. So many of you have reached out and said, hey, what happened with the shower wall that was cracked for your client, Kimberly? So quick update on that. Yeah, it sure was cracked. And we were lucky because the fabricator, the supplier, everybody kind of came to the table, solution oriented and tried to figure out what we're going to do. We finally have decided we've got a new slab. We're going to do a seam now instead of having a single slab, which is a disappointment to the client, right? Right? There's no question about it. But no one wants to repeat the exact same installation and risk that it cracks again. So that's how we're going to do it. The fabricator and the supplier are giving us a great deal, but there's still a $3,000 bill that has to be paid. Plus, there's the plumber who has to come in and uninstall the shower and reinstall the shower. We have to remove the tempered glass door and put it back on. You get the idea. It's going to be expensive, probably five dollars to $6,000. I'm so lucky. This is one of my favorite clients of all time. I explained the situation. I explained the $6,000 price tag. I offered to pay half of it, and she insists that that isn't reasonable, that it's three years old, it's their problem, they'll pay for the whole thing. Now, that doesn't happen very often, right? That really doesn't happen very often. And I will figure out a way to thank those clients for that kind of, what I can only describe as impeccable integrity on their part, right? I will figure out a lovely gift to thank them for that. I absolutely will. But weeks and weeks of back and forth handling a problem like that is not fun. And then at the end of the year to find out that you're taking home $30,000, yikes, it's horrible, right? And of course I said at the end of the year, which there's one of the problems, Kimberly, right? For so many years, I took my salary at the end of the year if there was money left over and often there wasn't. Today I know the very best policy is to take that salary, your salary, which is a fixed regular payment you're going to receive bi-weekly or monthly in order to do the hard work you do, I'm going to take that money early right off the top because then I'll see where the problems are with my cash flow. I'll be able to make changes. So at the end of the year, in addition to the salary, there might even be some profit. And then finally, With some of that profit, I can put that away and accumulate wealth. Because make no mistake, wealth is the goal. Wealth is what you need in order to retire comfortably. I didn't think about wealth when I was 30 years old. My kids aren't thinking about wealth. Well, they are because I'm bugging them all the time and I'm making them save right now. I wish someone had done that for me. The reality is most professionals in North America, not just interior design professionals, but most professionals will find themselves without sufficient wealth to live out the rest of their lives comfortably, maintaining the lifestyle they deserve and desire. I know it's a luxury and a privilege for me to even be thinking about things like that. I'm well aware of that. 
but it's a luxury and a privilege I want you to have. You guys are my people. This is my tribe. There are so many problems in the world today, and truly, it breaks my heart. I do what I can when asked to contribute to all kinds of worthy causes. We all want the world to be a better place, but this is my platform. This is my pulpit. This is where I can speak to people I think I can have some influence on. And what I want to say to you today that wealth is actually the goal, accumulated wealth, so you can retire when you want to. And that can never happen when we're settling for a salary that's as low as $30,000 annually. I know some of you are thinking, but I have a partner, he's a great wage earner, or she's a high wage earner, so I don't really have to worry about it. Really? You're going to trade your most precious resource, which is time, for like a little bit of money? That's what I did. That's what I told myself. My husband has a great job, so yeah, I'll worry about that later. I can't go back. You can't go back, but we can start where we are. I am 100% convinced that the purpose of your life is something extraordinary. The purpose of your life is not to work yourself to death. You work and I work, we all work, in order to generate personal income. Then we can pay the bills. For some, that may mean contributing to a mortgage or putting kids through school paying off a student loan, buying a vacation property. For too many years, I acted as if the purpose of my life was to fuel my business. I gave it everything, and in return, I don't know what it gave me back. Not in those early years. Certainly, it didn't give me back money, and I told myself, that's okay, I'm building sweat equity, Next year, I'm really going to step up and make more money. I'm going to turn these things around for sure. I told myself those lies so often. And then one day I'm sitting with my accountant and I said, oh my gosh, I made $30,000 this year. And he said, wow, minimum wage. Thank goodness for him. If you've been in business longer than a year and you're earning a salary of $30,000 annually for full-time work, that isn't enough, period, full stop. There is a better way. You pay yourself first. Don't do what I did for so many years and take that salary at the end. Taking your salary off the top allows you to see what's actually happening month by month in your cash flow. And that information can alert you to problems with your billing practices, with your collections policies, with your pricing model, with your contract. Early warning will allow you to make changes as you go. What happened for me so often is I waited to the end, I'd get the bad news and then I'd go, oh, wow, it was a bad year. Well, it's a new year now. I'm going to do so much better this year. No, I didn't. And you won't either. Not until you make the significant changes you need to make in order to run your business profitably. And that's what we teach at Business of Design, how to run your business and how to run projects. If you're not yet a member, you can still do yourself an incredible service by paying your salary upfront, biweekly or monthly, because then you won't get as far off the path as I got. I was really stuck in the weeds. Had I paid myself a salary, I might have seen some profit at the end of the year or none at all. And that would have alerted me to the changes I need to make in order to be profitable. And then with that profit, eventually your financial person will say, what are we going to do with this leftover money you have here, this retained earnings? Where should we put it? Should we invest it? Do you want to buy an office building? And that becomes the accumulated wealth you need to retire, to do all the wonderful things you want to do in the world. If you are a member of Business of Design, you're going to be so excited to meet Mike Michalowicz, author of Profit First. He's going to be at a BOD live event in June just for members. 
It will be our second BOD Live book club. The first one's going to be The E-Myth. Both of the books are available at businessofdesign.com. You do not have to read the books in order to attend the BOD Live event, but you do have to be a member. Pay yourself first. That's the best decision you could make in 2021. And start this year, right now, to create a plan to accumulate wealth. Before I sign off, I mentioned that I think it's important to make the world a better place. And I'm going to tell you about an organization that I work with. I volunteer with them and I donate to this cause And I'll do a shout out for the Venice Design Series because you might be interested in knowing about it as well, particularly if you live in the Los Angeles area. Homelessness is such a serious problem in Los Angeles. And Venice Community Housing is a beacon of hope. Their mission is to provide low-income housing. And they do this with such love and such integrity. Each year, they have an event called the Venice Design Series that happens around May, usually April, May, June, and it's famous for its home tours and garden tours and special events. So I went to, last year, I think it was, I went to the Malibu Wing House. It's a home in Malibu that's made out of a 747 airplane. It was spectacular, and we got to meet the architect, and we had lunch, and it was, it was just wonderful. And this year, we had something wonderful planned as well, home tours in Inglewood. And at one of the homes, Randy Newman was scheduled to sing, but of course, COVID, right? Like so many things, it was so sad that couldn't happen. However, Randy did do a concert for everyone who bought tickets. It was virtual, and it was a lot of fun. In 2021, the Venice Design Series is going to be focusing on outdoor spaces in light of the current pandemic, and some of the tours will be self-directed, so you could drive yourself around to various gardens and space yourself, and that way we can maintain safe social distancing. I hope this is the last summer we have to think about that for a long, long time. In any case, as I said, if you're in the Los Angeles area, you'd like to get involved with Venice Community Housing or Venice Design Series, I'd love to see you there. One day, we'll do a Business of Design event with the Venice Design Series. I can't wait until we can resume face-to-face events. I miss you. Pay yourself a salary right up front. Tweak your pricing model so you grow profit and begin to accumulate wealth. That's why we work. Yes, we love it. But I guarantee you, you're going to love it a lot more when it also sustains your lifestyle. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. I look forward to next time. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. It's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today 